Examples of performance indices. So as I indicated, you don't necessarily need to, you know, um, use first principles to establish what the performance or the engineering index is. These have been done for us and have been catalogued on CES. It all comes down to your understanding of what the loading um, parameters are on your design and for you to you know conceptualize an ideal model for it to enable you select the best uh, material index to identify you know um, the best materials to you know select or a set of materials in terms of the um, your um, field uh, for uh, selection consideration so when it comes to uh, structures being subjected to tensile load this is uh, the material index that you can um, use. So E over uh, rho, and in terms of its strength counterpart, sigma y, sigma y representing the Young's modulus over rho. Compressing strength. So if you're looking at the effects of buckling, it indicates that it will be the root of E over rho. Strength becomes a bit of a problem because um, buckling tends to occur before yield. So CES does not give us enough information to reduce the material flow when it comes to the effects of buckling from a strength perspective. And this is where the constraint based model comes in quite handy. So where um, CES uh, falls short based on these uh, dimensional constraints, then um, the methodology that I showed you guys last week comes in quite handy. Uh, structures subjected to torsion. So in this case, instead of looking at um, the Young's modulus, you need to look at the shear modulus. So the shear modulus is characterized by the letter capital G. More examples of the performance index. So we've got a model of a structure being subjected to a force normal to its neutral axis, that's the beam. And these are the performance um, indices to minimize um, weight or mass, thus maximizing um, the performance index. So when it comes to bending, uh, stiffness is A over uh, rho, the density. And when it comes to the strength, it is um, sigma y to the power 0.66667 over rho. To give you an indicator in terms of the nature of the slope, the slope is the inverse of the index here. So the slope that would appear on the graph will be equal to 3 over 2 or 1.5. So that gives you an indication. Again, when it comes to panels, um, this is um, the performance index. When it comes to stiffness, so e to the power a third over rho, the density. And if you wanted to, you know, interpret what the nature of the slope would be, the slope would be equal to three. So when it comes to using CES, and this is the performance um, index of interest, then you need to enter three as the slope. So we'll be looking at that in a bit more depth um, this Friday, this coming Friday. And likewise for the strength, it's got uh, an index of one over two. Thus, the slope for the graph will be equal to 2. So it all comes down to your understanding of your design and the nature of um, the load on your design to enable you identify uh, what your material field will be in terms of um, selecting the best material for that particular application. I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, concerning um, the constraint-based selection model because we've done that um, last week. So just a question of um, referring to the recorded tutorial on this. But just to give you a very quick recap, 
when it comes to this particular model it's more about focusing on the geometric constraints and how that you know correlates to the material constraint so we're looking at the variability in terms of you know a geometric parameter to how that identifies the best material in terms of um, its stiffness and you can do likewise for different parameters so if we were looking at you know geometric variance against um, transition in temperature whether it's fatigue strength whether it's uh, recycling capabilities then we can use a similar model like so to do that but the objective based um, selection model as defined by CES um, virtually does everything I think um, the only limitation tends to be around um, Buckland however um, there are provisions in CES where you can actually modify um, these parameters so we can look at that um, this coming uh, Friday so hopefully um, the majority of you have had to go uh, looking at uh, the constraint based um, selection model as shown last week you can use your information to you know plot a characteristic curve uh, concerning the example uh, that we're looking at we're looking at the table so if we increase the uh, the the, uh, the thickness of the table what are the materials that will be ideal dependent on you know what the thickness is um, I remember citing an example where we looked at aluminium so if I'm looking at aluminium aluminium typically has a Young's modulus between 69 and 70 GPA so we project from the y-axis that cuts the graph at this point and we project towards the x-axis to identify what will be um, the thickness